Hey everyone, this is Mami Grass. So as promised, I, I mentioned in our uh, Art and Crafts group that if ever I get a chance to, to record a video of a tutorial, I will post it in our group. So today I am sketching and painting this really nice French macaron. Okay, so there are actually three that I intend to, to paint. Uh, the reason why I chose this subject is because uh, I realized that I I missed the part of teaching you how to to paint simple flowers like lavender. So we're gonna we're gonna do both in this um, tutorial where I paint the macaron and also paint this really nice um, lavender flower. I got this off Pinterest and I'm gonna link I'm gonna put the link to that Pinterest post in the description box so um so that you can also sketch it on your own but i'm gonna show a time lapse um video also of how i'm going to sketch this one okay So here you go guys, this is a rough sketch of the macarons that I'm going to paint today. So um, just to be um, consistent with uh, 
with the reference photo I'm gonna I'm gonna use um, pastel colors for this one actually you can also mix your own pastel colors um, by mixing your watercolor with white but today I'm gonna skip that part and just paint with whatever um, pastel color that I have in this current palette so I have here uh, pastel pink lavender pastel lavender and then um, sort of beach um, or pastel orange and then for the lavender I'm gonna use um, violet permanent violet and sap green here sap green for the, uh, the leaves okay so again let me just show you my reference photo it's gonna be like this I'm not gonna paint the exact color but I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of follow some of the elements here but not entirely okay so paint na. Um, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my round brush size 12 to to paint the base color. So for the base color I'm just gonna use um, lavender, pastel lavender here. So yeah. And then I realized that uh, I want to add a little bit of red in this or uh, rather opera pink so that it, uh, it becomes a little pinkish pretty much the same with what I have in my um, reference photo. So it's something like this. I'm gonna add more. And as you, as you can see, it has plenty of water. So there. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, just gonna add this on my sketch. I, 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 if you notice, um, my sketch is not uh, light. So I didn't bother erasing my sketch so that uh, my students here will be able to see my my sketch okay but normally when I paint I actually lighten my sketch okay so but because this is a tutorial and my students are supposed to see my sketch I just leave it like that and if you also notice my macros are not as perfect as the one in the photo I don't mind at all because uh, I'm just gonna fix it with my painting instead so yeah, but if you can uh, do better sketch than I, what I did here, then you are free to do that as well. Alright, so um, next thing, while well, this is still wet. Oh, by the way, I'm using Popcupine Cellulose. Cellulose um, paper. Okay, next thing that I'm gonna do is to strengthen that color with less pigment more I uh, rather with more pigment less water so my brush is actually wet but it's not tripping with water so there you go so wait, this one is creamier than the previous color okay but what I'll do is um, to map out those areas where there would be shadows so I'm just gonna drop it here while this is still wet there you go so there should be shadow here as well as um, here also so basically I'm just adding textures by putting in um, thicker pigment okay then here also So here so I am looking at my reference photo so that I don't get lost but if you want to do this without the reference photo and just you know paint it on your own it's also you can also do that you can even change the color of your um, the color of your macarons because you know fresh macarons come in various um, colors I even saw one that's blue so you can also do that and then just and what I will do I will sort of sorry my hand I realize that my hand is blocking your view so I'm just gonna take the excess water and because this is cellulose I'm gonna make sure that my brush is not too wet because it's gonna destroy my I'm just gonna soften these sections here because they're too sharp. I'm gonna soften with just water, okay? So there. There you go. Yeah. 
So if you notice, I'm also spreading the colors a bit because um, with watercolor, uh, sometimes the color, the, the paint dries very light. So I'm gonna just spread the colors that I put in, the shadow colors like that. Because I realized that the paint is dried very light. Intensely. Okay, there. So now we have the base color for our um, French macarons. So let me just uh, let this dry for a bit. I'm gonna stop this video. Okay. So this is dried a bit. I'm gonna add the yellow, the cream filling of the macarons here. And then I'm just gonna use, um, for that, I'm just gonna use um, here. This is yellow ochre and then some pastel orange. There. And I'm laying it uh, thick. So let, there's less water, and if you notice, I also shifted to I also shifted to smaller brush there. And then here also, I'm gonna add that. Just to add some shadow, I'm gonna add more yellow ochre and a bit of um, burnt shenna just for the shadow, the shadows of uh, macarons. So let me just do that here. So basically, I am adding in the shadow while this filling color is still wet, okay, so that the color will spread. Also, so if you notice that your paints are spreading towards the purple section of your macarons, don't worry about it too much, just get on painting and we'll try to fix it later. I'll show you how. So now I'm gonna strengthen the color of the macaron by adding more colors and then just gonna add a bit of um, blue in this one. So I'm, I'm, I'm making a stronger version of my pastel. This is for the sections where I see some sort of um, shadows. Just to add some texture on my macarons. Okay. You can also do this. And I'm just gonna spread this color a bit here because there should be a shadow here also. I'm gonna base it on my macarons there. I'm gonna base it on the reference photo rather. And I'm just gonna add some. So I'm just dubbing my brush where I see some shadows. Because um, macarons are a little bit porous. I'm just gonna do that here, like that, and then straight in we'll add this, just some sort of texture, like that. 
again, I am basing this on what I am seeing on the reference for I'm gonna use the same color to add some shadow here because the light will be coming in from this side. Okay, if you notice something about my voice, I actually have a bad case of cold right now. And I'm just supposed to be a live class. But I chose to just record it because I am really not feeling well at the moment. So I actually told my students that I won't be able to conduct um, this on my live class. I will instead um, just grab those colors out because supposedly this is the lighted section. So I'm correcting my paint, my, my artwork by just lifting up some of the colors. Okay. We will add shadow in later. Okay. Next up, I'm gonna fix is this one. Okay, this one. And then this object. So I'm gonna use the same, I'm gonna mix the same colors. Basically pink and my lavender color, pastel lavender, and then we will add a bit of blue. Okay, I'm adding a bit of blue to make a darker version of this color. Okay, and I'm just gonna swipe this here because this is a little um, uh, on the shadow side. And then I'm just gonna soften it using my brush loaded with water. Okay, my wet brush. Okay, like so. If you notice, I am doing this in brush so that um, the color is spread. So this is one of the things that, um, that is beautiful about cellulose paper because you can do that with cellulose. You can lift, easily lift off colors. And then I'm just gonna do the same like what I did here, where I gotta, uh, I'm gonna dab my brush around this part of your macarons of the macarons so that there's texture there and then I noticed that it's not as dark as I want it to be so I just add blue more blue and then more pink there you go and I'm just gonna just to sort of yeah the boundary and then I'm actually correcting I'm actually correcting the colors as I paint okay so that's the thing about mixing colors because um, maybe the color would be different from this one because I'm not using pre-mixed colors but I love to experiment a lot with my paintings so I can just do that also here so that almost the same when it comes to colors there. and um, <coughs> there you go like that and then there's a spread of color here and then I'm just gonna fix that by wetting my brush cleaning my brush and just spreading this color here there okay and I'm gonna do the same for one. So I'm just gonna dab it around here also so that uh, we capture the porous part of the macarons. Okay, and then I'm just gonna use the same color to. Wait, no, my brush is not as wet as I want it to be. Let's just fix. Uh, let me just mix this color again. So again, I'm using lavender, opera pink. A little bit of blue. Okay, whatever blue you have, so long as it can do the work of darkening this mix. Okay. And I actually forgot what blue I have in my palette. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, I think it's Prussian blue. Yeah, it's Prussian blue. So what I'm doing here is actually adding 
a darker color for the bottom of the macaron and uh, I'm just trying to also soften the colors a bit there. So that's our main subject, main macaron. Um, let me just fix that. spread. Um, let me just fix this one. Oops, it's patterned. So, <laughs> so my paint is spattered on its own. But I actually was planning to spatter later, but since it has done that already, then there you go. <laughs> There's a spatter. Okay, so next up I'm gonna fix, uh, I'm gonna finish this one. So let, uh, I'm just allowing this to dry for a bit before we add the lavender flowers. Okay, so um, here I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna strengthen this again by dubbing uh, by dubbing some colors here just to add the porous part of my there macaron. Okay. Soften this part because there's supposed to be shadow section here as well. So let me just do that. <coughs> so I'm adding the same color actually, and then I'm gonna clean my brush with water and just spread the color. So by doing this, we're actually adding some sort of uh, dimension as well as texture to our painting. So like that. <coughs> you have to forgive me for. Coffee. I really have. I really am not feeling right now. So uh, here I'm just uh, mixing um, opera pink and my um, blue, which is um, Russian blue, and then I'm just gonna dab it here, and then sort of throw in fine lines that separate sort of shadow just to be able to separate uh, the upper layer of macaron and uh, just here so I'm just doing that here to make sure that I am separating the layers of macaron basically drawing it I'm basically drawing it like that so we just add more shadow colors here okay, there. and then I noticed that um, this needs some some more paints Adding this for texture. <laughs> if you don't like that pencil mark, actually, we're gonna paint around it later using negative painting technique. Okay, let me show you to do how to do that later. Okay, <laughs> so. So next that I'm gonna do is paint on this macarons with lavender flowers. Okay, let me just dry this for a bit. So this is a little, um, this is a little dry already, but I'm just gonna strengthen the layer, the, the, the boundary between layers of the macarons. Okay, so by adding this um, line here, but it as you notice this is not a continuous line there so I am actually adding the line by dubbing my brush like that okay and then just some lines also within the filling okay like that so I'm gonna do the same for this one 
So I'm all, I, I'm again using the shadow color that I mix, which is a combination of um, lavender in pastel, opera pink, and then a little bit of Prussian blue. Okay, just to add some uh, sort of layer in my macarons. Okay, there. Because I noticed that the layering is not so clear here. There, and then just so we just fix that here for a bit. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and then because this section is supposedly darker, because there will be shadow, I'm gonna strengthen the shadow by adding more um, Prussian blue, okay? And then just wait, add more opera pink and Prussian blue here. <coughs> so if you uh, if you notice, I'm using cool colors for this uh, painting. Mostly Prussian blue and um, opera pink, okay? Uh, I'm adding again the second layer or third layer of shadow just to darken it because again because this is um, watercolor they tend to dry light and then I'm just softening it like that and then I'm gonna add some here also at the bottom <clears throat> So I'm just opening again with clean water, like that. And then I'm gonna add more if I see fit, okay? So for my students watching this, uh, it's the same for what we did in the fruits. Uh, I'm gonna link it above. So it's the same for fruit. The fruit painting we did where we add, we layer more shadows and sections that we need to, and then softening it with <clears throat> okay, so it's the same technique there. So the, the shadow is better, and then let me just do the same for the other paint, the, the third macaron. So the reason why I keep mixing colors is because I want my students to to really learn how to mix colors on their own. While it's really convenient to use, mm, while it's really convenient to use pre-mix colors, um, the idea here is to learn how to mix your own colors so that you don't buy, you don't buy uh, too many paints, okay? Because it can be expensive to do that. But if you can afford to do that, why not? But for for beginners, it's really important that you learn how to mix your own color <clears throat> and you know uh, be able to experiment with different values okay so uh, like what I'm doing right now I'm actually um, experimenting on the colors that, okay and then I'm just gonna soften that again using my clean brush So the, the light again is coming in from this from this direction. Okay. <clears throat> so while that is drying, I'm gonna paint the flowers. Okay, so there's a flower here and some uh, leaves and flower here. Okay, so I'm gonna do that now. <coughs> so I'm gonna use uh, the same colors but maybe of different uh, amounts. So uh, for the flower on this corner, I'm just gonna use the lavender, um, pastel lavender color, and some Prussian blue, just a bit of Prussian blue. Okay. And then some, <clears throat> and then of course water, because um, I'm 
I'm just gonna paint the first layer first. Okay? Okay, let me just add a bit of... It's basically the same color with macarons, but lighter because we're just painting the first layer first. First layer, okay? So there. So if you notice, I just did a uh, thing with my brush where I just do that. I just follow the drawing. <clears throat> then, I'm gonna darken it using um, pink, opera pink, and blue. Okay? Because the flower has these details like that. Okay? I hope you're seeing that. And then I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do that. Okay? Just gonna flick it like that. So uh, yeah, so I'm paint I'm painting this actually wet on dry because uh, I'm using cellulose paper. You cannot do this with ano eh, with you cannot do this with cell with cellulose the wet on wet technique. It, usually when I'm using <clears throat> when I'm using cellulose paper, I only paint wet on dry. <clears throat> So this is sap green. I'm just gonna add a little bit of sap green on my palette and then some yellow because uh, the flower actually has green pinch in some sections. So I'm gonna do that here and then I'm just gonna spread that color a bit with wet brush. There you go. And then I'm just gonna strengthen this color here. actually a yellow in the middle there. oh by the way be careful when you're painting around your macarons because if this is wet uh, you will accidentally spread the colors using your hand with your hands so make sure that the your macarons are dry when you do this okay so this, this is just a loose um, version of the flower and we'll just add sap green again to paint in the stem. There you go. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna do the same for I'm gonna do the same for this part. So I'm just gonna get sap green again and just add the stems here. Okay, using my brush. I'm using my size 6 brush by the way in case I missed to say that a while ago. And then I'm just gonna sort of do this. Just an impression that you have leaves. So I'm just putting this randomly around here. <coughs> gonna randomly dab my paint here okay this is just a loose um, version of the actual this is the part where I don't really follow the I don't really follow the reference uh, photo anymore I just do this just to complete my composition <clears throat> there. and then I'm gonna the, if you notice uh, in the reference photo there's no lavender flower here but while I was drawing this, I realized that there's a big space in the middle. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna paint um, lavender flower here. And you know, it's really easy to paint uh, lavender because it's basically just, you know, the main stem there. And then maybe we can have more like that. And then. <clears throat> I just mix, I just mix with red 
and okay, that palette is dirty. I'm just gonna mix my red here and blue, okay, to make my own violet, and then maybe a bit of opera orange, or uh, rather opera pink, so that um, I, there's unity in the color mixes that I'm using, and then I'm just gonna dot it like that, okay. So that's how I usually paint loose lavender. So this is just the first layer. Okay, and then I'm gonna add more pink and blue. But this time with less water. <clears throat> and then I'm just gonna add this uh, right in the middle to sort of represent shadow for my lavender. Okay, so I know I realize that this is too short for a lavender spot, lavender flower. So let me just add more here, there. So if you want to adjust your flowers, the way you would want them to be presented in your painting, you are free to do that as well. <coughs> Just gonna add the shadow color here. There. Have a loose lavender blossoms here. And now we're painting um, the, okay, the final stroke on the macaron is really the flowers. So let me just do that. It's the same technique that we're gonna use when we are painting this lavender flower. But this time we're just gonna add some leaves there using your brush and then just stem you can also add more here okay also if you want and then <clears throat> we'll use the same color that we used for so here we're just mixing um, alizarin crimson and same blue Russian blue and then a little bit of opera pink just to add uh, lavender flowers on your on the decor of your macaron okay there you go okay and then I'm just gonna add more blue and the same color so that these would be the darker shadow of see it's easy like that Okay, <clears throat> then we're gonna do the same for this. We're gonna do the same for this uh, macaron here. So it's like this. There, and then just leaves, leaves. Then we can actually darken the color, but we'll do that later. Let me just add the. Uh, lavender flowers first so again <clears throat> this is just a loose version of the lavender so i'm just dubbing the color here and then <clears throat> let me just add some more so i'm using caution blue again and alisarin crimson and um opera pink to mix my lavender color Oh, by the way, I am using the same colors all over, over and over again so that um, the colors will be harmonious. So when you are painting, it's I, for me at least, it's best for me if I use the same colors for my mixes. So there's harmony for my painting. So I like it that way. Maybe some other artists would like to use different mixes on their paintings. So it's a matter of preference actually but the books I've read suggest uh, harmonious <clears throat> mixes of color for paintings so I think I prefer it that way but if there are artists out there who are doing it differently then feel free to do that okay, so no one should stop you from doing that if you like your art then go ahead and do that <clears throat> so let me just add the stem because I lost it along the way <laughs> while painting the flowers. And then I'm just strengthening the color of the leaves here. There you go. See? 
see. So there. Now the next thing to do is we notice that the, the painting, the composition is actually just hmm, floating here. There's no shadow elements yet. So we're gonna do exactly that. But let, first let me just fix my flower stem. It's, it's, uh, it's weird. <laughs> Just do that here, darkening the right side of the leaves because supposedly the, the, the light is coming in from this direction. <clears throat> Let me just fix my my leaves by <clears throat> by adding by adding brown to my green so that some of the shadow section of there would be some old shadow section for my leaves. Okay, so I'm just fixing. Again, these are just loose version of the flowers in the reference photo. This is the part where I just did not intend to really you know, follow the <clears throat> reference photo. Okay, and then I realized that the yellow should have some bit of texture here. So let's get a bit. Let's add that. This is just yellow ochre. Alright, so that now <clears throat> my my artwork is ready for shadow. So let me just so what shadow should I use? I'm gonna mix um sort of gray okay because uh because I don't want uh, my my I don't want my okay so I just used the, the the same color that I mixed for for everything here every for, uh, for all the purple that you see in my drawing but I'm gonna add blue and a bit of brown to make that nice grayish color and now I'm just gonna add that underneath my macarons for the shadow okay there so I'm gonna also add this here also okay because these are leaves right this is these are this would cast shadow okay so I'm being careful not to touch my drawing uh, there so, so I'm just adding the shadow color here so the shadow being cast by the objects or well, let's say this is a table okay and then I'm just gonna add this shadow also here as well as here And then <clears throat> I'm just gonna spread that using plain water. So I cleaned my brush and then just I'm just gonna spread that around. So I'm being careful, I'm being light uh, handed here because I don't want to disturb the painting that I just did. Okay, so there. if I think that so I'm just gonna put some color around that because I did promise that I'm gonna I'm gonna remove the pencil mark so the way one way you can do that is you know paint some background okay atmosphere paint the atmosphere around your drawing so this is one way of doing that by painting the background okay <clears throat> and then the reason why I'm doing this again is to remove, sort of fix my pencil marks here, sort of negative painting, but I am also trying to bring out my drawing, okay, like that. So when you're doing this, I hope you'll be careful. Okay, so I'm gonna strengthen the shadow by adding Prussian blue and brown on my palette here oops sorry about that and then I will add a 
bit of here, the opera paper. There you go. And then I'm going to add that directly below. So this is still wet. That's why the color will spread. So uh, directly below my macarons, my objects actually, not just the macarons. There. So that uh, my drawings aren't exactly, <laughs> uh, won't look like they're floating, okay? So yeah, you can do that also. There you go. There. There. So this is uh, our finished artwork. Uh, just for, uh, just for, just, be, just to be consistent with this pottery here, my African pottery. I'm just gonna mix the same color that I did for um, the macarons. So that would be uh, opera pink, the lavender color, pastel lavender, and a bit of, and a bit of blue, Prussian blue, but this became too strong, so I'm just gonna add more. There you go. And then I'm just gonna spatter this around, okay? Just around. If you want, you can also add a bit of green in your spotter. So I'm just using sap green there. And then I think I'm happy with this one already. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sign it with my name using my brush. Okay, so let me just grab my brush and then sign it here. Last. There you go. So I hope you like it. So this is the macaron that I have uh, painted for you guys, especially my students who are watching this. So I hope that you learned something from this day. So without further ado, thank you so much for watching this tutorial and I hope that you'll paint this and I hope that uh, you'll share your work so that I can see them also. Bye!